Hi there, I'm Michael Bovey with Consumer Recovery Network, and today I'm going to hit a heavy hitting topic about the life cycle of a debt and what does that mean to you. Well, uh, to begin with, obviously you open an account, and I am talking specifically about unsecured debt, right? Credit cards, unsecured loans. Um, something happens in your life, you've been paying, everything's going fine, and that's healthy debt, but you had to stop. You couldn't continue to make payments. Now, what starts off as just a couple of days late or just a few weeks late are opportunities, and there's a link here in the video about hardship plans. Your banks want to talk to you. They want to try and help you turn things around, keep things on track, and they've got some really dynamic payment options to talk about with you. But once you go 30 days late, that's going to show up typically on your credit report as a 30-day late pay. It hurts your credit. You can bounce back from that kind of a negative, though, just by getting back on track and working with your creditors. What happens after that is a 60 days and then a 90 day late pay. And this is the kind of damage, certainly after 90 days, that you really can't undo. In other words, oh, okay, I missed three payments. My bank wants to work with me on some kind of hardship plan or repayment plan over five years or whatever the case may be over some duration of time. And it actually is going to prolong the damage to your credit than if you had uh, made, made a decision to just kind of rip the band-aid off rather than pick at the corners and settle that debt for less than what you owe because you'll get a zero balance updated to your credit report and bounce back quicker than from the payments at that point once you reach 90 days late. So that's kind of a first part of a point of no return that you want to accept that it happened and make plans around it typically. After the 90 day mark, you hit four months for certain types of debt, this is a key inflection point. For lines of credit, fixed loans, things that don't revolve, like a credit card balance, right? You can use it every month, pay it down, use it every month. Fixed loans are usually something that are not revolving, and I'm talking about SoFi, Lending Club, Prosper, or Chase gives you a line of credit. This kind of debt charges off at about 120 days. Now, charge off is covered elsewhere on our channel and on my website, so you can click through to read about that. But that's what happens to unsecured loans. Now, most debt that I work with people on tends to be credit card debt. And that is going to be the next inflection point. At six months late is when credit card debt charges off. So remember, fixed loans, four months charge off. Credit cards, six months charge off. Why are these dates important? Why are these inflection points something to, that are remarkable? Well, charge off is when most lenders on unsecured debt are going to subject your account to any of their external collection policies and procedures. Those policies usually include three things. They can send your account out to a contingency debt collector. These are the type that just call you and write you and try and get you to pay. If they're successful, great. If they're not, your creditors aren't going to let them sit on it forever. After a few months, they pull it back and decide to do something else with it. They can sell the debt to a debt buyer. And that can play to your strengths in the life cycle of the debt, which I'll get to in a moment. Or they can send the account to a collection law firm. Well, that's, that's the kicker right there. That's the one we're, we're all trying to avoid. I do do consults with people. So, and they're free. They don't cost you a dime. In the description below is a link to our consultation page where you can schedule a time to talk with me and I'll go over all of your debt and look at your situation, where you're at in this first set of time, what we've covered here, six months and help you determine in your efforts uh, trying to solve your debt problem what's the most important to do first, second, third, fourth, all the way down your list, build you a complete strategy in that short period of time, in 15 minutes. For the most part, I can do that and I've been doing that for people for over 20 years. In this six months, you want to identify the things you can do and the things you can't do. Follow through on the things that you can do and then make a plan for the things that you're not going to reach in that level of time which leads us to a next much larger inflection time period, which is seven months to 12 months late. So for the accounts that ended up getting sold to debt buyers, for the accounts that ended up going from contingency collector to contingency collector, in other words, kind of a hot potato, you have opportunities to resolve these debts. When debts are sold to debt buyers, for example, there's really only a few, a handful of debt buyers left in the US. There's a massive consolidation after the housing led recession and some regulation. But you have an opportunity to have a much longer duration, a much longer span of time to resolve a debt. Many debt buyers today buy up debt and they'll settle with you and give you a year, two, sometimes even three to pay them back. That's awesome. 
because you can engage in a settlement, pay it off over time, and not have to look over your shoulder about getting sued for that one just because you didn't have a lump sum to give them at a specific time to prevent it. This gives you the opportunity to do more than one debt at a time when they land with debt buyers. Contingency collectors, you don't have that big of a hurry or big of a rush because they don't sue. And so you've got a situation here between months six and 12 where you can implement the second stage of any debt resolution plan. After that 12 months, the next inflection point is pretty much that whole another second year, right? 18 to 24 months. These debt buyers that buy debts, they don't really sue right out of the gate. They do on some, but not all accounts. And you put together a plan for the ones you can get to, and now you've got a stage of debt that is, oh, okay, well, this creditor doesn't sue or even begin to think about suing in the first year. You have to start making plans for that between month 13 and month 24. Those that you can get to, and hopefully you have gotten to, all of your debt inside that 24 months. In fact, going back uh, historically for me working with people, building plans, implementing plans, whatever, I'm trying to build a timeline where you can get all of your debt settled inside of 24 months. Doesn't mean you're done paying for all of the settlements. It just means that you have them all locked in. Again, so you're not looking over your shoulder for a lawsuit being served at your door. So in this time frame, hopefully you've got everything solved, but what if you haven't? And what if you're watching this video and this whole life cycle, you're, you're behind the curve, right? You're just learning about these timelines and these inflection points. What can you do? There's still stuff you can do. So the next inflection point is as you approach three years. For some of the same reasons you want to hop on things in you know month one to two of being late, as time goes on, there's just increased risk. But at month three, you are now in some states approaching what's called the statute of limitations. What is this? Well, it's the time frame in your state that a creditor or a debt buyer has to sue you. And the time on that clock starts ticking from when you stop paying your original creditor. And in, for, let's say for example, South Carolina, Maryland, a couple of other states, there's this three-year statute that limits them from using the courts to collect from you. If you can get over that hurdle, great. But what you find is that a lot of debt buyers and creditors know that you live in that state and they know what the statute of limitations is. They have technology that will alert them to all the accounts that are, say, six months from hitting that statute of limitations. And they'll flag those for attorney placement to get engaged in collection, including suing you, before they lose the opportunity to do that. And most states have a four-year statute of limitations. Many states have six-year statute of limitations. So you look at these timelines for your state, and if you're curious about them, post in the comments below. So for example, in California, if your state statute is four years, again, remember, six months before that four years is up is when I tend to see debt buyers and creditors take advantage of the fact that they can still sue you. So what happens now if you live in a state where you have some debts that haven't been resolved, and you're past the statute of limitations. Let's say, again, let's pick on California, it's four years. You have a three more years that you have to wait for this to become what's called zombie debt. In other words, it has, and we have a link up about zombie debt, but after a debt goes more than seven years without payment, it will age off of your credit report. That seven years is based off of when you stop paying the original creditor, not when any debt collector got it, not when any debt buyer got it. They don't get to renew or re-age that seven year reporting cycle. It's all the same. It's tied to the original delinquency date, forward seven years and it ages off. So that's the last part of this life cycle, at least that we need to be concerned about or try to build plans around. Why? because I live in a state where the statute of limitations is six years, or let's say four years and I'm at year six, it's got a year left on my credit report, but the lender I just applied to for a home loan told me, sorry for your luck, pal, we're not gonna get you this loan unless this thing's resolved. Well, now I still have to go back and do that if I wanna get that home loan, right? So inside what amounts to seven years for the vast majority of us is this life cycle of a debt. One day late, seven years late before we can move on with things and uh, do things with unpaid debt that age off of our credit report. Just as a note here, you can settle a debt. Your creditor has a requirement to furnish only up-to-date accurate information to the credit bureaus. Let's say you settled it at six months late, one year late, three years late, four years late. They have to update your credit to show that you resolved it. You can go on with your life with mortgages and things like that. 
it will also fall off at seven years. It's not really hurting you. You've bounced back from all that, but just so you know, negatives, whether they're paid or unpaid, have that shelf life, seven years. So that's the life cycle. There's a whole bunch of resources that we have on our channel here to help you resolve debt throughout that whole thing. There's somebody like me waiting on the other line for you to schedule a consult to develop a plan for your particular set of debt at the cycle that it's at. See you on the next video.